Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today, as you can tell by the title, you can read. Obviously, if you're here, you can read. Uh, we are doing the mid-year book freak out tag. So I'm gonna run through all these questions, kind of wrap up my reading that has been happening so far in 2021. It's crazy to think that we're like halfway done with the year. Like that is crazy. I have read 89 books as of now. It is what, June 22nd right now? 89 books down. Who knows how many more to go? My goal was 120, so I have a feeling I'm gonna surpass that. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the tag questions. The first one is the best book that you've read so far in 2021. I'm gonna have to give that one to Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. This was one of the most shocking books that I read this year. I read it for the Thrills and Chills readathon and I underestimated her, okay? I have read Jennifer Hillier's other books and really enjoyed them. They've all been like four or five stars for me, but this one was just a standout. Like, you know when you're reading a book and about halfway through you're like, oh yeah, this is one of my new favorites of all time. I got that feeling with Jar of Hearts. I don't even wanna tell you what it's about. I think you should go in blind, but basically we're following a woman who was tied up in her best friend's murder and disappearance in the late 90s, early 2000s. And now it's many years later, she's a successful woman with this career that's just popping off. And we're flashing back and forth between when she's getting caught for her involvement in present day and when she was getting tangled up in things back in the 90s. So it has that historical vibe. It's like very Heathers, uh, getting a Slurpee at 7-Eleven with my uh, boyfriend's varsity jacket. And then it switches back to this high powered rich executive who is being accused of something and then more shit pops off from there. This book is extremely graphic and extremely disturbing. So if you cannot handle really explicit content, I would not suggest this for you. But if you like really explicit books, go for this one. Look up the trigger warnings first though. Next up is the best sequel that I have read in 2021. And this is an easy one as well. Gotta give it to Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the follow up to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And we are back with Pip as she is on the case with her true crime podcast yet again, trying to solve another disappearance of someone in her little town. And I'm so excited that this is getting extended into like a whole ass series because I fell in love with Pip after this book. She's a little bit more angsty and edgy in this book than she was in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I absolutely love that. This was an easy five star for me and I'm so excited for the rest of the series. What is my most anticipated new release that I need to get to? Uh, the one that I have in my possession that I'm most excited to get to right now is Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. I've heard amazing things about this from literally everyone. So many people have been giving this five stars and I know it's about like a mother and daughter that got kidnapped years ago and now like the daughter's back or something like she she comes back. I don't know. It's missing women. I'm always going to be down for that. <laughs> so I'm ready to get into this one. I've also heard it's very dark and twisty. So super excited for that. And as for releases that have not come out yet that I'm super excited for, my top one would definitely be Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I'm just ready for all the 80s slasher horror movie vibes. Oh my God, I think this one follows a girl who gets into a car with a serial killer. Hello. I think everyone like stays awake at night wondering, you know, what would happen if I was hitchhiking in the 70s and I got into Ted Bundy's like little beetle. Or maybe that's just me, I don't know. Maybe that only happens to you if you obsessively listen to true crime podcasts, but I am so excited for that book as well as the new Lisa Jewell. I think it's called The Night She Disappeared. 
not quite sure the cover just got released but i'm not sure if there's a description and then also the karen slaughter new standalone that's coming out as well i love karen slaughter standalone so you best believe i will be picking this one up on release day and reading it on release day next up is my biggest disappointment of the year so far and for me that is gonna have to be the echo wife by sarah gailey and i had really high hopes for this one it's about a female scientist who discovers how to clone people and there's like a lot of ethical moral dilemmas around her husband and her cloning people he ends up cloning her and then it's a love triangle between the wife the husband and the clone of the wife so i thought it was going to be very messy very drama filled and it ended up just falling a little bit flat for me like that description is just pretty much what happens in the book so i was looking for a little bit more it was a little bit disappointing meh but my biggest surprise so far of 2021 has been Two Truths and a Lie by Meg Mitchell Moore. Oh my god, I was not expecting this one to be one of my favorites of all time. Like, I thought this was going to be a fun little contemporary beach read, and it ended up being a five star and one of my favorite books that I've read this year. It is so much more than what this cover is serving you. It is a suburban domestic thriller with some very dark, mysterious elements to it, but there's also romance and it, the characters just feel so real. I got very attached to a lot of these characters. Meg Mitchell Moore's writing it just really sucks you in. You feel like you're in this world and I can't get over it. I absolutely loved this book and I highly recommend it, especially for the summer. If you're looking for something to like read by the pool, this is it. What are my new favorite authors? Either a debut or new to me. I have definitely discovered a couple new favorite authors this year. First one definitely has to be A.R. Torre. Oh my God, I don't know what happened to me, like why I was underestimating our queen, A.R. Torre, but I just thought that she wrote like kind of trashy books, to be honest. And now that I'm reading them, I'm giving every single one four, 4.5 and five stars. So she's one of my new favorites. I highly recommend this one and the Deanna Madden series. And then another newly discovered favorite author of mine has to be Grady Hendrix. Hello. Every book that I read of his, it's just like 4.5, 5, 5 star, 4.75. Like he doesn't miss. I love every single one of his horror books, especially this one and the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I, I can't get over it. It's funny. It's campy. It's sarcastic. It's self-aware, but it's horrifying and it's disgusting. And that imagery will stick in your mind when you least expect it, when you're like going to bed, you'll be like, oh shit, is there a roach crawling up my leg? Like I can't function right now. <laughs> I love Grady Hendrix. Next up is my new fictional crush and my favorite fictional crush that I have read about so far this year is definitely Teddy from Second First Impressions. He is just such a sweet little golden retriever soft boy, but all wrapped up in this edgy emo punk boy looking package. Like he's covered in tattoos. He has the floppy hair. Like that is what I'm looking for. But usually the personality of an edgy boy, I'm like, ah, scary, get away. So the fact that he's a soft boy, I was like, you've completely stolen my heart. Obviously I'm engaged, but like, Teddy's personality really reminds me of my fiance's personality, except Cameron is not living my pop punk fantasy, okay? <laughs> he is just a sweet little soft boy and he looks like a soft boy, but Teddy has like that, that edge, you know? So maybe Cameron should take some notes. Maybe he should like dress up as an emo boy for Halloween so I can live my Teddy fantasy, who knows? Next up is my new favorite character and this, it's a little fucked up, but my new favorite character is actually Reb from Brother. So he's a murderer, like straight up serial killer, but 
I love him. Basically, if you don't know what Brother is about, we are following this little boy who was kidnapped like really young and he was kidnapped by this family of serial killers. It's very like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface vibes. And so he grows up in this family and he's indoctrinated into this culture of this is what we do. We murder people and that's how we hunt and we cook and we eat. So that's life, kid. And his older brother, Reb, is really, really sinister. And it's about, you know, how he's growing up in this family. And when it comes down to it, what's he gonna do? Is he going to stay with this family and do what they have taught him to do and become a murderer as well? Or is he going to break the cycle? And the older brother, who's like a hardcore, like straight up murderer, is one of my favorite characters I've ever read because he's so fucked up, but he's not just like evil, like he's very layered. His motivations for doing the horrible things he does are really honestly very psychological and very deep. So I loved hearing about his psychology, but I also just liked that he was like kind of a crazy narcissistic sociopath at the end of the day. Like he was so charming. Like the way that this was described, he was literally Billy from Stranger Things. And I'm so sorry, but I just picturing him the whole time, I'm like, you can murder me. Okay, if you wanna look like that, you can murder me. <laughs> Straight up, come to my house, take me away, murder me in the woods, <laughs> I don't care. And uh, this book, by the way, is set in the 70s, so that's like a very accurate description of this character. He's just so charming and funny and sly, and it's like, bro, if I came across this man, I really think I, I, he would trick me. He would trick me, I would be murdered. <laughs> I just love him, like he's so horrible, but so charming, and he's such a narcissist, and it's just so, fun to read about a character like that. So we love Rebel, even though he's crazy ass serial killer. Next up is a book that made me cry and I had to go with Malibu Rising, you guys. Taylor Jenkins Reid just knows how to do it. The first time I cried during this book was on page 40. Page 40. And then I proceeded to cry like three more times throughout reading this book. It is a family drama, dives into the family dynamics of Mick Riva, this famous singer's children as they are, you know, growing up. And then it's flashing back and forth between them growing up and this one night when they're having this big Riva siblings party and things are really getting out of hand. All the trauma is popping up and saying hello. So, I mean, this book literally, cue a Stefan moment, this book has everything. It has romance, it has mystery, it has drama, it has family dynamics. It has discussions of sibling dynamics that have never been put in a book that I've read before. Like it's so layered, the psychology is so interesting, especially for somebody like me. So I highly recommend this book. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll love the whole thing. Next up, it is recommend a book that made me happy, and that has to be Forever Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is the last installation in the Simple Wild series, and this one and the middle book I read in 2021, they both made me extremely happy just seeing Kella and Jonah's relationship progress as they move to Alaska together and just start a family and put down the roots. Oh my God. It made me so happy. It was so heartwarming. And the vibes in this book were just absolutely immaculate. I literally read this during like the beginning of summer. It was like May, it was like 80 degrees outside, but I kept forgetting and like thinking it was winter because the Alaskan vibes in this book were so strong. So this one definitely made me happy, even though I'm really sad that the series is now over. All right, we're getting to the last couple questions here. What is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year? And obviously I'm gonna have to give that to The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Hello, the like shiny foiled rose gold, <laughs> the like severed head, but it's like that statue thingy, the like, 
cracked marble. It's giving me dark academia. It's giving me fall. I'm definitely saving this one for my very first reading vlog of the fall season. So get excited for seeing this beauty in that video. And then the very last question is, what books do I need to finish before the end of the year? Uh, there's about a hundred of them. I will link my TBR cart video that I put up about a month ago, going through my entire physical TBR and showing you guys everything I need to get to, hopefully by the end of the year, although realistically that probably won't happen. Uh, but if you missed it, go ahead and watch that. And that brings us to the end of this tag. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and supporting my channel. Don't forget to like this video if you actually liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.